Here we are. I just got to wait for comments. Mm, it's still thinking. I'm not seeing myself at all here. Um, I see you. Okay. I don't hear you yet. You need to come over here and look at my... <laughs> oh, here we go. I, this is really slow. On my side, it looks correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Video looks good. I got toys in the background, but... Hey everybody, we're just getting set up here. Gonna make sure we can see. Hi there. Oh, we're seeing a couple comments. Okay, that's good. Somebody just let me know that you can hear me. We were just testing the audio here. Hey Tammy. Hey Dawn. Hang on. I'm interrupting up here. Okay, we'll give everybody just a minute to jump on here and then we'll get going. Mm -hmm. Say hi if you join, then I can see. We had a issue seeing comments last time I did this, but now it looks like I can, we are doing a different setup. So um, as I go through things today, if you have questions or comments or anything, just let me know and we'll go from there. I have lots of show and tell items today. My name is Sarah Hotchkiss from Catalyst Wellness Coaching. I am live stream uh, from Basics Cooperative today and we're here to talk about kids nutrition and in particular gut health and how to um, you know get them to eat healthy and put together healthy meals so you can join me for the next hour or so and again if you join us and have comments or questions drop them in um, basics has avocados on sale this weekend 99 cents a pound those are great for kids great healthy fats um, sometimes I use them to spread on toast instead of mayo or you can make guacamole with them um, slice them up put them in a salad um, the other thing you can do is actually before they go bad which you know there's a, a brief period of time between when an avocado is really amazing and when it goes bad it's like it seems to be like a day and a half but if you want to chunk it up and freeze it you can put it in smoothies as well and it makes it um, just really smooth and gives it a great consistency without um, a lot of additional you know weird flavor that kids would notice so that's a great option too. So those are at Basics this weekend on sale. So I have lots of show and tell items um, to do and so we'll get going here. So what I'm gonna focus on today is kids gut health in particular um, and then just kind of some nutrition tips. Um, so if you have questions as we go, let me know. Um, you know, I think one of the questions too is why does your kids gut health matter at all? Like, you know, what does it impact? and you know, your gut controls digestion and elimination, nutrient absorption. Um, it's connected with your immune system and it's related to inflammation or lack thereof. Um, and it's also connect connected with um, your kids' brain health and skin. And then as they get older, their hormone balance. And all those things are important as they get older. Um, if your child has a poor gut microbiome, this can impact their sleep, and we all want them to sleep well. Um, their concentration, their mood, um, their immune system. So if you notice your child is getting um, sick with frequent colds or flu or like things like that, um, improving their gut with healthy foods can be helpful for that too. It can impact their energy, and that can go both ways. That can mean that they're tired all the time and have low energy, which could be related to how they're sleeping, 
or could mean it seems like they're bouncing off the walls all the time. Um, so that can be a reason too. And it can impact behavioral issues, um, you know, as well. So that's why it matters. Just kind of look at balancing your child's um, gut microbiome um, out well. And so I'll give you a few tips for that today. If your child is up for the challenge of trying something new um, on the basics site, you can post a picture of your child trying a new vegetable by the end of March. Um, so, and then you can message basics, your child's name and your address, and then they will send you a free gift. So if you want to send if for national nutrition month, if you want to send a picture of your child trying a new vegetable, um, I know in my nutrition coaching business, I am introducing both kids and adults to new vegetables all the time. And a lot of times, um, things that people haven't heard of. So things like, um, parsnips is a big one that I talk with people a lot, a uh, celery root. Um, some of those kind of different ones that I think a lot of people haven't heard of. So, um, but I'll give you a couple examples today too, as we go. So how do you improve your child's gut health? Where would you start? So I think there's kind of two different buckets here. Um, you know, eliminating the foods that feed the bad bacteria in the gut and then increasing the foods that feed the good bacteria. So, um, eliminating things like processed sugars. So that's like a lot of the, um, you know, sugary beverages and most processed snacks, um, refined carbohydrates, cakes, cookies, that type of thing, um, crackers, bars, waffles, bread, pasta, baked goods, um, an overabundance of those things um, can kind of mess with your child's gut. And then increasing the good stuff that feeds the good bacteria in their gut. So um, plain organic yogurt is really great. Um, I'm not talking about the stuff with the Oreos in it, the sweetened Oreos. I'm talking about like just plain yogurt or kefir can be really good for that too. Um, lots of fruits and veggies. I wanted to give you all a couple ideas of ways to get additional vegetables in your kid's diet because that's a big thing that I hear regularly is an issue for people. Kind of how do I do that or um, how can I get that done? So um, I guess one big idea would be putting fresh spinach or kale um, or a tablespoon of canned pumpkin even, or canned sweet potato in a smoothie. Um, first of all, it makes it a pretty color, um, especially for the month of March, like making green smoothies for around St. Patrick's Day is fun. Um, during the fall, I love making pumpkin or sweet potato smoothies. And um, all those things are super healthy and you can blend them up with fruit and other ingredients and they don't notice it as much and it just makes it a fun color. I'm going to drop a smoothie recipe um, towards the end of this broadcast actually in here for you that will include, include both fruits and vegetables and some healthy fats and protein. So you can have that as well. Um, soups are another good one. So even just your basic like chicken vegetable soup, um, zucchini, carrots, things like that, green onions. Um, the other thing that I have done sometimes is taken the vegetables and put them in the soup. And before I add, like let's say, I, let's say I'm adding chicken or some other protein, I will take like a stick blender and puree it all. Um, so then, cause I know sometimes my kids and kids I know will like kind of sort through the soup and try to pick out the vegetables that they don't like. Usually it's zucchini for my kids. Um, but if you blend it all together, you know, then they can't pick that out as much. And then it's just kind of all one substance. So you can blend your veggie soup and then you could add, if you were doing like shredded chicken or beans or whatever, you could add that. Um, possibly and that can work too. So um, the other thing that I like, I wanted to show you a picture of today that I add in my soups a lot or I just stir fry for brunch. My video is shaky here. <laughs> Sorry. Is, um, it's this brand and it's at Basics for a few dollars. It's a Cascadian Farm Root Vegetable Hash Browns. So there is um, white potatoes in here and carrots and sweet potatoes, super simple. So you can make hash browns in the morning for your kids um, and they're really getting some extra vegetables in here. I also will make chicken soup and dump a whole bag of these in here and then they're pre-shredded and ready to go for me, which is awesome. Um, and they taste great and it gives my soup a really great consistency. After these are cooked, you can puree this too if you want, but you don't have to. So the Cascadian Farm root vegetable hash browns are probably one of my favorite products that I like. Um, so that's an option too. Um, you can either at home or stop in in basics, come get a green smoothie. Um, there's a couple different um, recipes that they have here. 
but you can add things like, um, my son loves green smoothies, so cucumber, um, celery, green apple, usually ginger's great in there, uh, lemon or lime. Um, kind of, sometimes we do smoothies with whatever we have laying around, so it doesn't have to be a green smoothie. Sometimes we'll do a orange smoothie with like uh, cantaloupe and carrots and oranges. Um, or of course my personal favorite would be a beet smoothie. So you can do uh, beets, oranges, apples, and ginger is a really good combination. Cucumbers works in any of the smoothies too because they have a high water content um, and you can kind of puree them right through. So that's another idea and it's a way, you know, it's something they're drinking. I wouldn't say, I would say you want them to get either cooked or raw vegetables in addition to the smoothie because you are pulling some of the fiber out in the juice, but that's just another way uh, to get them some additional vegetables. Um, you can also do just raw veggies and fun dips, or I'm going to talk a little bit about salads. I think there's this assumption that kids don't like salads, but I'm not sure if we do a great job introducing them to salads or like the make your own salads or that type of thing from a young age. So then I think that they learned that it's adult food or it's not something for them to eat. So salads would be another idea as well. The third thing I would say as far as improving your child's gut microbiome is just to work with them and model um, not overeating. Um, so in a world of you know, hyper palatable processed, extra sugary, extra salty and packaged foods, hunger and satiety are really thrown off for us because everything tastes so good and we eat it so fast and then a lot of times we eat it so fast and then we're just kind of like over full. You get that stuffed feeling. So I think working with your kids on portion control and eating till they're full so they're not just snacking all day, um, but making sure that they're not overeating on a regular basis. So, when, you know, and it's your job as a parent to, to work and see what those portions are and ensure those appropriate portions. I think the other thing I would add to that is meal timing. Um, your kids, just like adults, our guts need time to rest and digest. So we really weren't meant to eat all day long or snack all day long. So having um, some discrete meal times and snack times are really important. And maybe that's three meals, you know, period. Maybe it's three meals and one snack, three meals and two snacks. But um, if they're eating kind of all day, or if you're eating all day, I work with adults on this too, your gut doesn't really have a chance to digest all that. Um, and that can be an issue also when we choose snack foods and we just snack all day, we tend to choose foods that are less nutrient dense. So um, sometimes I tell people, if you're hungry, eat a meal, not a snack. So if you can remember that and get yourself to do that, or if you're gonna create a meal for your kids, and I'm gonna put together a couple things for you today, think of it as almost like a little mini meal, as opposed to just a bag of chips or you know um, a half a waffle or whatever. Um, so think of it as a meal and, and not a snack. Um, so ideally, if you can get them and yourself to eat till you're maybe 80% full, I tell people to eat till you're 80% full. When you're 100% full, sometimes it feels like too much. So eat till you're 80% full, full, and then take a few hours before your next meal or before your next snack, you know, and then it's okay to be hungry. Um, I think sometimes we've lost, um, I think we've lost uh, like touch with what being hungry is. Yeah, that's fine, you can leave it. Um, so, it's okay to be hungry. We don't get to the point where your blood sugar is crashing or anything like that, but it's okay to be hungry. Wait till you're hungry and then eat again. Um, so I think some of our foods with fast food too and, and snacks are so easily available. And I think that makes it tough too, because we can just eat whenever we want. And we don't, you know, we don't have to do much, or if you're not cooking it, then you can just grab and go. And, and while that's sort of nice, I think, um, sometimes that's gotten to us into a, habit of eating all the time and eating mostly snack foods. Um, so, and then making sure the meals that you're feeding them or the snacks that you're feeding them or yourself, I mean, all of this advice goes for adults too, has some protein, some carbohydrate and some fat in there. And I'm gonna talk about how to kind of put those together a little bit today, but then your child is more likely to be full for a longer period of time and to get adequate nutrition. So the other thing that you can do to help your child's gut that has nothing to do with food is actually sleep. So um, I think a lot of times our kids are in lots of activities, maybe less with COVID right now, but um, our, our kids and adults, all of us suffer from inadequate sleep, whether it's poor quality or poor quantity. Um, 
and that can lead to dysregulated insulin or blood sugar issues, which can lead to diabetes, type 2 diabetes in particular, later on in life. Um, their gut has no time to rest, digest, and repair, and that's what sleep is for. So that's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, the other thing I would add is, you know, to increase their sleep quality is just like we tell ourselves and adults is removing devices an hour before um, bed. So making sure that they don't have device or screen time an hour before they wake up and making sure that that's not the first thing that they wake up to as well. Um, making sure that their brain signals are in line and they're getting quality sleep and quality awake time. So sleep is very important. And I think that's something we don't think about as much when we're thinking about kids nutrition, we think about the food end, but there's other pieces of it as well. Hydration, that's another big one. Um, making sure that your kids are getting water. Most adults I work with, I say, depending on your activity level or temperature outside, if it's summer or winter, but at least half your body weight in ounces of plain water or lemon water. So that can go for kids too, it's kind of a general. So if your kid weighs 70 pounds, at least 35 ounces, um, that's probably like three large cups. Um, if you're thinking like, you know, some of these type of cups um, of water. I generally would avoid, of course, soda and Gatorade, sugar beverages, and even really too much juice. Um, I also, in general, would avoid um, artificial sweeteners and artificial sugar beverages and really just getting your kids to get used to drinking water when they're thirsty. Um, ice water, plain water, um, there's a couple things that I am good with kind of adding to your water that I think um, is fine and contributes to a healthy gut. You can do, um, the, in a lot of the sparkling waters, the ones without additional artificial or um, any other sweeteners are really good. So like the LaCroix and the Clarbrooms and the things like that I think are good. Um, you have to watch sometimes the amount of bubbles for little tummies though. So um, I wouldn't use that as a mainstay. Um, but I think here and there, those are good. I also, if you've worked with me, you know I love the product called True Lemon. So it's True Lemon, True Lime, True Grapefruit, True Orange, and really it's just dehydrated zest of those citrus fruits that you can put in your water, you can put in their water or their sparkling water for a little extra flavor. So that's good too. Additional hydration and enough hydration of plain water helps balance the good bacteria in their gut and then flush out the bad bacteria. Um, so hydration is another big one, I would say. The other one I would say that also really has nothing to do with food is physical activity. And um, I know activities have been different or limited with COVID this last year or so, but physical activity will promote bowel regularity and balance the gut bacteria and enhance motility again. And I'm not even talking about getting your kids into organized or high intensity sports necessarily, but just getting them outside um, and of course, outside is great so they can get additional vitamin D, but just having them kind of play and do physical activities, um, taking them to if there's an open gym or gymnastics or getting them involved in a sport or activity that they love, bike riding, um, you know, walking, running, playing on a playground, things like that. But honestly, just playing outside is fantastic for kids. It's also, of course, really good for their imagination. The last piece I would add for on the gut health piece is some supplementation. Don't push a lot of supplements for kids in general, but even just a basic probiotic and a basic kids multivitamin can be a really good addition um, to hopefully some of the diet pieces that you're putting together because we all know that you'll put a lot of energy into trying to make sure that your kids eat well and that you know you might not hit 100% or even 80% some days and they might not want to eat or whatever. So an additional probiotic and a multivitamin can be great for um, their um, gut health in general. So I have a couple that I was going to show you. They're both at Basics. Um, Smarty Pants is a pretty well-known brand. Um, and this is a gummy. So I know a lot, of, a lot of you do gummies with your kids, which is fine. Um, in general, as kids get old enough to swallow a vitamin, I do prefer like a soft gel or a capsule. Um, but these are really good to start with. So these are Smarty Pants Organics. They're $28 at Basics. Um, and there's 30 gummies, there's 120 gummies in there, 30 servings, it's four a day. Um, so that's an option. And then um, probiotic wise, Garden of Life has a really good brand. There's lots of good brands for multis and probiotic. I just pulled two today so you can see what's at basics. Um, so this one is Organic Kids, and then this one has additional vitamin C and D, which are really good idea, especially during cold flu and COVID season. Um, 
So there's 14 probiotic strains in this one and um, 5 billion. So this one's waterable. This one's a, a chewable. So that's a good idea too, good brand. Those are really the basic two. I mean, if, if your kid's having issues in other regard with other things, you could add, but really those two are really kind of the basic things that I would add as far as supplementation for kids. Keep going here. Don't see anything. Hi, Chantel. Hey, Becky, Angie. Angie says 10-4, sounds good. Yeah, we almost lost my face on the screen, but at least now we have audio. <laughs> All right, I'll keep watching for comments if you have questions. So all that's like well and good, right? That's what you should do to assist with your kid's gut health. Okay, but how do you do that? How do you get them to eat some of the fruits and vegetables we're talking about? Um, packing lunches, snacks, what does that look like? So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today um, as well. The two things, if you were to take away two words even, from today that I would tell you as far as nurturing your kids' gut health and their health in general, I would say be persistent and be gentle. So I think it's that constant just nudging of, would you like some carrots? Would you like some apples? What do you wanna grow in our garden? Do you wanna help me cook stir fry? It's just those little things kind of every day and you're not pushing them or making them eat things because that's not going to be helpful usually, but it's being persistent and doing those things every day and sending those positive messages around whole foods and being gentle with nudging them to do that. Um, so that would be the two things if you could remember from today as far as strategies for working with kids that I would say. I'm gonna give you some kind of functional ideas here, but in general, being persistent and be gentle. So a handful of other ideas then of how to make this happen. First of all, I guess I would talk a little bit about roles. Um, it's your job as a parent or a caregiver to shop for the food, prepare the food in general, um, and provide regular meal times for your kids, right? Your kids then once they are presented with the food are gonna decide whether or not to eat and how much to eat and what to eat. But you at least can cover the basis with those, with those first three things. Um, you know, I would ask, how are you role modeling what you are eating? What's in your house? If I come over and open your pantry or your fridge or your freezer, what will I see? When they open the fridge to find something to eat, what's the first three or four things that they'll see? What will that look like? And I think keeping consistent healthy choices in your fridge, pantry, and, free and freezer will be super helpful as well. So what are you eating? Are you eating with purpose? Are you... Um, you know, eating at the table in general as opposed to, and I know we all eat on the run. I literally just ate a steak, steak salad on Milton Avenue yesterday because I was rushing to something else. But in general, and I didn't feel good after I did that because I was stuffing my face and trying to drive, which is probably not helpful. Um, but are you generally eating, let's say, 80% of your meals um, together at the table? I think that's huge. That's also helpful um, for digestion too because we're not rushing and we're not racing and we're eating our food slowly, taking our time. I think that's another lost art. I think we are used to kind of like shoving food in and moving to the next thing, like I just said I did. Are you trying new foods as a family? Are you taking them grocery shopping and introducing them to new foods or asking what they see when they walk down the produce aisle? What do you see? What looks good today? And having, you know, having them pick things out. Or, you know, I was just at Basics in the produce aisle and I saw kumquats, so I had just, um, shared kumquats in my private uh, coaching group two weeks ago, I think. And um, I always try to share kind of a funky fruit or vegetable in my coaching group. So, but, you know, having them pick that out and be like, look, these look like little baby oranges. Let's try these and bringing them home. And, you know, the worst thing that happens is you don't love it and maybe you don't buy them again. By the way, they're amazing. So, um, but trying some new foods and um, role modeling that. Shooting for whole foods in your house 80% of the time. You guys know I'm a big fan of the whole 80-20 model. So shooting for whole foods 80% of the time and what does that look like? So if I open your fridge, am I gonna see mostly whole foods? You know, that would be my question to you. And I think going back to eating till you're about 80% full, so modeling that too as far as what you put on your own plate, what you put on their plate, 
Um, you know, there's different kind of avenues to this. You can kind of, you can have them serve themselves as they get older or even when they're younger and just see kind of what they take as far as servings and kind of teach them that. You can do family style and have things at the table for additional servings or, or wanting more things. Um, you know, you can approach it however you want, but I think just making sure that um, you're modeling, eating at the table, slowing down, and mostly whole foods um, is, is a really good place to start. The other piece, and I want to explore this with my therapist background a little bit, um, is kind of exploring, I would call them like food feelings or kind of the emotional side of eating. I work with lots of adults that um, say they have issues with stress eating, eating when they're stressed out. And of course, you don't reach for carrots when you're stressed out and you need sort of comfort food. It's like mac and cheese and ice cream and things like that. And I work with a lot of adults who are recovering from autoimmune disease or um, depending on their childhood or how they were raised, have food anxiety. They're afraid to eat certain things. Um, and, and sometimes it's because there's a physical symptom associated with eating. Sometimes there's a mental or emotional connection with certain foods. So, um, you know, how can we prevent some of this from happening as kids get older and grow into adults? Some of the emotional piece that has to do with food. Um, so I think sometimes there's pressure from family or in social situations to eat a certain way. Um, and this can go both ways. Sometimes there's pressure to eat super healthy and like never have a piece of cake or whatever. And sometimes it can go the other way. Um, I've heard of, I've talked to some kids actually recently that were like made fun of at school for bringing sort of more healthier foods at lunchtime or bringing something a little bit different. So um, I think looking at that and how do you um, present, um, you know, is there pressure in your family to eat a certain way or when you go out to eat or in social situations, what do you communicate to your child in that regard? The rushing is a huge thing. I was just talking about that. So I think just hitting that home again too, um, making sure that your kids have time to eat. Um, I know I have the opposite issue at home. I feel like my kids take like an hour to eat dinner and we eat usually late. So I'm kind of like, oh my gosh. So, you know, um, I hate to do things like set timers for food and stuff like that, but you know, achieving some sense of balance in that regard of not rushing them to eat and stuffing their food down, you know, but they don't need to take an hour uh, to eat either. So you have to find kind of a happy medium there. Um, I think generally trying not to use food as a reward. And I know this is a really typical thing to do and it's very easy and I'm sure I've done it before too. Like, well, if you get, you know, if you do well on your report card, we'll go get ice cream or, and I think that something as simple as that is probably not a big deal, but doing that on a regular basis or always using food as the only reward that you give your kids can develop some emotional connection with food as comfort. So then when they get to be adults and they have a bad event or they're feeling sad or whatever, then the first thing they're gonna reach for is some of those junk foods. And I think that sometimes that can get us into a bad habit as well. I think just, this is like a whole nother topic, but just thinking about the body image and diet culture and all those other things. And you know, it's hard to, your kids are gonna see signs and hear things on TV and whatever, but just being aware of what our culture is surrounding food um, and being able to answer que any questions that your kids might have around that is important too. I think the other thing that sometimes I hear um, people doing is I would call it like moralizing foods or like putting foods in categories of good and bad. And essentially really there's no food that's all good or all bad and you also have to figure out what works for your body. I spent a lot of time working with adults on that. But trying not to categorize foods into this is really bad for you or this is really good for you. Um, knowing that if you hit that 80-20 with whole foods that we can all eat a balanced and varied diet and that that's what our gut wants too um, from a health perspective. So um, I think it, the other thing um, I would add is just involving your kids in some regard. So asking them for feedback no matter what their age is. I think doing that from a young age is a good place to start. So you know what sh if, if you take them to the store with you, or even if you're doing like Instacart, like, you know, sitting on your couch in your living room, like asking them what they want to eat for meals next week or asking them what they would like at the store or taking them to the store and asking them to explore and they get to pick three things out that they want to eat. Um, if you do a basic garden or an herb garden, asking them what they want to grow this year and taking them with if you purchase, um, you know, 
plants or um, seeds to grow in your garden. Um, helping them, um, involving them in planting the garden and taking care of the garden can be huge also. Um, you know, again, having them help out pick things at the store, having them help you cook all this stuff too. You know, ultimately it's your responsible for cooking and providing the meal to your small children, but there's no reason they can't help you cook. And when, when kids are involved in the process of cooking nutrition, they're more likely to eat what you made together. So if you're making stir fry or soup or whatever together, they're more likely um, to, to participate. If they participate in the process, they're more likely to eat the food that you all made together. Um, the, the other thing that I used to do with my kids as from a young age is, um, and I just did this recently, a couple weeks ago, but have them page through cookbooks. You could do this online too. I prefer sort of good old school cookbooks, but having them page through cookbooks and put post-it notes on recipes that they love um, or that they want to make. And again, that engages them. You also can get a feel for like what types of recipes they um, really seem to like. Um, flavors, um, textures, you know, things like that. And that'll give you an idea of what to make more of. Um, I, from a dinner perspective or it, and honestly like any other um, meal, it, you think of the idea of how could you take a meal that you're gonna make and make like a build your own option. Um, so, uh, let, okay, pizzas. You could start with a, a crust of your choice and then offer just an array of vegetables and have them pick what they want to put on their pizza. Um, maybe an organic marinara, some lean proteins, things like that. Um, but then they have some control around their food and kind of what they're eating and they're making their own. Tacos, you can do make your own taco bar, you can do organic corn tortillas and like a ground beef or beans. And then again, as many vegetables as you can throw out there, put that on there and explain what they are and um, put a whole bunch of vegetables on your taco or on your pizza and talk about how good it is. Um, salads, make your own salad bar or um, stir fry is a big like favorite of mine because they can add lots of different vegetables to a stir fry. You can do you know brown rice or something else with that or a protein. Um, and that can be kind of a good make your own option too. So thinking of a meal that um, you like or that your kids like, um, and, and you may have adults that are picky or different in your household too, and everybody likes different things. That's the way my household is. Um, so anything that you can make your own baked potato bar, anything that you can do like a make your own option, sometimes that can be a really good idea too. Um, I would say that if you're packing school lunches, or if you're making lunches, anything that's kind of grab and go um, can be good too. So um, I grabbed a few things here. I grabbed a few healthy snacks too, but um, so I'll show you. But things like hard boiled eggs, um, organic nitrate free deli meat, um, maybe raw cheddar cubes. Um, there's, I love the Chomps brand, but there's like turkey sticks, um, beef jerky, salami, things like that are good. Um, any kind of raw vegetables, celery, cucumbers, um, peppers, carrots, fruit slices, apples, oranges, kiwi, the sky's the limit, really. Grapes, like grapes are really popular with kids. Um, raw, I do prefer raw, but raw nuts, raw seeds, um, any kind of nut butters, or it could be like celery and almond butter, or something like that. Um, dips, kids, kids love dips, so hummus is a really good one, or like uh, an avocado spread, we just talked about avocados. So you can even just, you don't have to make full guacamole with this. You could just mash this up, honestly, with a little bit of salt, pepper, and lime and use it as a dip for your kids. So here's a couple like snack or easy lunch ideas that I like for people. So Tara makes a great like sweets and beets. There's also one that's carrots and apples and it has cinnamon and sugar on it and it's super good. So um, there's a couple different brands out there, but um, sweet potatoes and beets and sea salt are the only ingredients in here and they're crunchy you know like a chip so that's good uh this is probably actually hands down my favorite brand um plant snacks um it's made from cassava root so it's made from a root it's actually grain free chip but kind of an option here they make um a vegan goat cheese option a beet one the lime is my favorite so that's why i grabbed that today um so these are really good for kids too they could dip them or just kind of eat them plain um but those are, I think that's a good option too. Again, any fruits I talked about, but 
My son likes particularly green apples, but you can choose whatever you want. I love these little cuties or like the little um, mini oranges for kids because usually they're easier to peel for them. You can peel them ahead of time too, but they're usually easy to peel for them. So I find that that's nice too. Um, one of the things that I learned when my kids are in elementary school is they don't get a lot of time to eat lunch. It's like, you know, when I would eat with them, it was like 15 minutes. And by the time they like sit down and get their food, and we always did cold lunches because I feel like it saved time them waiting in line. But by the time they sit down and eat and then they're like jabbing to their friends or whatever, um, you want to be able to do some easy stuff that they don't have to assemble a lot. So that's why I said even peeling the orange ahead of time or cutting up the apple slices ahead of time or whatever. Because sometimes kids are putsy when they eat and they and they take a long time and they would come home and like three quarters of their lunch was left and I'm thinking what the heck did you do for but I'm in my head picturing that they have 30 minutes to eat and it's a little bit more relaxed but it was totally rushed which didn't make me happy and then they're all racing out to recess and there's food everywhere so I think trying to make lunch as easy as possible is good so these are fun from Cal Organic uh, they're rainbow cut and peel baby carrots so these are fun just because the colors are cool. These are also great in soups. Um, so there's three different color carrots in here. Um, I chose red pepper because I think we think about like cucumbers and carrot sticks a lot of times for kids, but I feel like sometimes we forget about sweet peppers. Some kids don't like green peppers, but like orange, yellow, and red pepper slices with the avocado or with hummus are like a really good option. Um, I know both my kids like those. Here's like the, um, this is the primal brand that I like, but this is just a classic like beef stick. They have turkey too. So all of these would be like really good grab and go either snack or, you know, lunch options. Um, so I think those are good too. Let's see if there's just stop for a second. See if there's any more questions. So pop in if you have other questions or comments. And just knowing that kids go through stages, you know, um, and just to do the best you can and not to be too rigid or freak out about it. There's going to be periods of time that your kids don't like to eat certain things. or, But I think, again, just being gentle and being persistent, um, providing them with mostly whole foods to choose from, getting them to try new things and leaving them open to options, even taking them out to eat to different places, not just going to fast food, but taking them to a restaurant where they have kind of array of different options to choose from, um, I think is really good too. Um, you know, a, another kind of swap out idea, I, I hear this from parents a lot, that when their kids are, their kids are, um, have more energy when they get home from school. And by the time they eat dinner, especially if you're working late or, you know, it's like at least eight o'clock before we are eating dinner most nights. My kids are older, so it's a little bit less of, of an issue, but, um, but sometimes our kids are exhausted and cranky by the end of the night um, when it's time to eat. So another option is to essentially give them dinner for snack. So give them like a full dinner at like four o'clock or something when they get home from school. It doesn't matter when they're getting the meals or how you're doing that. So maybe they're eating like chips and an apple or something for dinner while you're eating dinner, but they've eaten a really balanced dinner at like 3 30 4 o'clock like after school so it doesn't have to be during the times or maybe they're in a good mood and a little bit more open to different food options um saturday or sunday mornings when you're not rushing out to school um and their breakfast foods don't have to be pancakes you can make chicken noodle soup and eat it you can make pizza and eat then so thinking outside the box a little bit of almost like when you present their meals too and working with their natural kind of circadian rhythm and when they're in you know when they're not crabby <laughs> don't try to feed them like a whole bunch of new foods when they're not when they're tired and not in a great mood so but just kind of swapping that out and thinking outside the box a little bit I think can be helpful as well so I will hang out just a little bit and see if anybody has questions I am going to drop a just a fun smoothie recipe in here too I talked about smoothies a little bit and I suggest those for adults too because there's it's a great way to get some protein and fruits and vegetables in your diet. It takes like two minutes to make. Um, that you could drink on Milton Avenue or like on I-90 and it'll probably be less of a um, less of an issue, but smoothies are great because um, yeah, they're quick and easy to make. Lots of their nutrient dense if you make them in the right way, I think. Um, but I will post a smoothie recipe in the comments here so you can see that. Um, 
So, but one of the recipes I have, this is a recipe I'm gonna post, is maybe a half a cup of organic plain yogurt. If you wanna go dairy free, you could be, um, Kite Hill makes an awesome almond based yogurt, or you could do um, a co like So Delicious or one of the other coconut yo yogurt brands. Um, but I like the plain yogurt idea. Maybe a half of frozen banana, or um, a half a cup of frozen strawberries, any fruit for that matter, but those are two examples. A handful, you don't have to measure it, a handful of spinach or kale. I suggest spinach or kale or baby kale because the flavor on those is less pungent than some of the other greens and they blend in pretty well. Um, I once tried arugula in one of my smoothies and that was definitely a no-go for me. I love arugula in a salad, but in a smoothie it's very like spicy, very peppery. I would not suggest using that. The darker the green, um, the better for you. So I, I um, would suggest using spinach or kale over like iceberg or romaine lettuce in general. Um, so throwing those in the smoothie can be great too. And if you blend it up well enough, they're not even gonna notice it, especially if you have something like strawberries in there or raspberries or blueberries, it's gonna make it like red or blue anyway, so it won't matter. Um, so that's a good option too. And then I would add, you could add some chopped avocado, you could add maybe, it doesn't have to be a lot, but even like two teaspoons of like a raw nut or a seed butter, like an almond butter or a cashew or a sunflower seed butter. And like I said, I love the raw because um, it's a little bit less processed. And when we heat um, nuts and seeds, um, sometimes they react differently in our body. So I do prefer the raw. Um, you could add two tablespoons, one to two tablespoons of chia or flax seeds in there too. That makes the smoothie like thicker and then that's additional fiber and protein for your kid. And then you, you can just add like ice water, honestly, for the rest of it and blend it up. I'll post the actual recipe for you here. Um, so if anybody has questions on that, and again, you could vary it up as much as you can, but that's like a base level like smoothie idea. And that's a really, has a really good macronutrient ratio. You're getting the um, probiotic from the yogurt, and then you're getting, um, you know, some good vitamins from the um, vegetables and fruits. You're getting some um, protein from the yogurt and from the kind of nuts and seeds and some really good fiber in there too. So, and sometimes kids are less likely to like sit down and eat a meal. So sometimes giving them a smoothie that they can drink can work out really well too. So I will post that in the comments. Is there any other questions that anybody has about the topic? I know it's a hot topic uh, and it's Kids Nutrition Month at Basics in March. Um, come check out kind of all the deals here this weekend. There's lots going on. Everything that can I kind of, I showed you some of my favorites today that I like when I shop at Basics. There's like a million more, but we would have to film this in the aisles for me to get the rest of them. But those are a handful of things that I really like here and great things I think for kids. All right. I don't see any other questions. So I will let everybody go. Have a great Saturday. Um, try some new foods. Post a picture on the basic site and send them your child's name and address and they will send you a free gift for National Nutrition Month. Bye-bye.